Deadpool and Wolverine is the third film in the Deadpool trilogy, the fourth film in the Wolverine franchise, the 14th film in the Fox X-Men franchise, and the 34th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. guys uh, now I'm gonna be completely honest with you I was not excited for this movie or I guess more accurately going into it this looked like everything I did not want to see from Deadpool 3 because I really like the first two Deadpool films I think they're on the more positive end of the spectrum of comic book superhero adaptations and a large part of that is because of how grounded they are the first movie is a revenge thriller love story. You know, it's Deadpool hunting down the Weapon X people who tortured him to the point where he looks like a stale Popeye's biscuit. But also, the movie is centered around Deadpool and his relationship with Vanessa, who, for whatever reason, never becomes copycat in these movies. Which isn't the end of the world, but I just feel like it would have given Marina Bakkerin more to do than just stand around and be sexy. I don't know. Uh, the second movie is also a revenge film, but instead of Wade getting revenge, it's Wade protecting a kid from Cable who wants revenge on him because he's going to grow up to become mutant Charles Manson. And that whole movie is all about Wade trying to save this boy's soul. And then you get this movie. And all of the marketing, all of the trailers, all of the TV spots and those annoying 10 second targeted ads, everything this movie was sold on is about the multiverse because of course it is. And just nothing about any of that instilled much confidence in me about this movie. I don't like multiverse stories just in general. Uh, there are a few exceptions that I can probably count on one hand, but I'm just not the target demographic for multiverse shit. Also, Logan is one of my favorite comic book movies, and as far as I'm concerned, that is the end of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. So bringing him back with an over-designed mcu take on the classic yellow suit, and he's jumping through Doctor Strange portals, just everything about this movie looked like what I would imagine a post-endgame MCU Deadpool movie to be, unfortunately. But fortunately, the execution is a thousand times better than the concept that we were sold. So this picks up directly after the events of Deadpool 2, and Wade is having a midlife crisis. Wade feels like he doesn't matter, and the only way that he thinks he'll matter is if he becomes a full-blown superhero, which weirdly ties back into the whole point of the first movie, but inverts Deadpool's character arc thematically, because instead of thumbing his nose at the idea of being a superhero, it's like the thing that he wants more than anything else. But at this point, it's just not in the cards. X-Force didn't work out. Uh, this movie confirms that Logan does in fact take place in the main Fox X-Men timeline. So with the exception of Colossus, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and Yukio, all of the X-Men are dead. The Avengers turned him down. And it just gets to the point where Wade just gives up on everything. He gave up on being Deadpool. He gave up on his relationship with Vanessa, and now he's just scraping by as a car salesman. But then Mr. Paradox of the TVA recruits Deadpool to join the MCU, and in a meta sense, this will finally make Wade matter, because the TVA is being used as a stand-in for Disney, and the X-Men universe is an allegory for Fox. And with the Fox universe more or less being built around Wolverine, after his death in Logan, as far as the TVA slash Disney is concerned, the Fox universe died with him. But because Deadpool was a last minute success, he's allowed to join the MCU. But everyone else in his world has to die. And Wade is not down with corporate genocide. So he steals Mr. Paradox's portal gun thingy, I don't know, I didn't watch Loki. But he travels the multiverse, and everything that I was afraid about this movie being 
basically happens in a two minute joke sequence where Deadpool is looking for a suitable Wolverine to replace his universes so that it doesn't get pruned. It's fun. It's inoffensive. It's not like Multiverse of Madness or worse where the fan service just is the movie. And it was a fun sequence too. You know, we got to see Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, uh, comic accurate short stack Wolverine, brown and gold Wolverine, which in all honesty, I wish that was the costume for the whole movie because it looks a thousand times better than what we actually got, but that's neither here nor there. They even did the fun little Reddit fan cast cameo gag from Doctor Strange with Henry Cavill as Wolverine, who would make a decent Wolverine if we're replacing Hugh Jackman at some point, but I don't know, my fan cast vote still goes out to Carl Urban. And Deadpool finally kidnaps a drunk off his ass Wolverine variant but his offer to replace Dead Man Logan with classic-ish drunk Uncle Logan is rejected by Mr. Paradox, and they're both banished to the void. Which, by the way, this Logan throughout the entire movie is referred to as the worst Wolverine ever, because one night he went AWOL, and then when he came back to the X-Mansion, he found that all the X-Men were murdered, and then he went on a killing spree. And that's pretty bad. But I mean, come on, I think we all know who the real worst Wolverine is. Anyways, The Void is like a trash heap for Marvel IP. And from here, the movie shifts gears into being a Mad Max style Wasteland Odyssey tribute to the Fox Marvel Universe. Wolverine and Deadpool get the help of X-23, Blade, Elektra, and Channing Tatum's Gambit to help them find their way back to the TVA so that Deadpool can save his universe and Wolverine can potentially go back in time and save the X-Men. And the entire time that I'm watching this movie, I'm like, this is what Multiverse of Madness thought it was. You know, this is what The Flash wanted to be. And this movie is a fun little last hurrah for all of those characters, or in the case of Gambit with Channing Tatum, we actually get to see a forgotten promise realized. And just a quick side note, I love that the movie went as comic accurate with Gambit's costume as it did. Be that as it may, in the exact same way that Peacemaker is the perfect case for why you should directly translate costumes into live action, Gambit here is the perfect case for why, uh, for certain characters, maybe just don't. That doesn't mean I didn't appreciate it, but you know, still. There's also Cassandra Nova as the primary antagonist of the film. Uh, she's sort of like the Immortan Joe of the Void. And I'm curious to know what people who don't read comics think of her in this movie. Because I know who Cassandra Nova is. And this movie is definitely working off of the audience's assumed knowledge of Cassandra Nova. Which is fine with me. You know, I'm always the one saying, fuck the general audience. This isn't for them, this is for me. But part of me does feel like if you don't know who she is, then everything done with her character just falls flat. That said, I love the actress person who plays Cassandra Nova. Emma Curran plays her perfectly. In an ideal world, I would have loved to see this Cassandra Nova go against James McAvoy's Charles Xavier. Because first of all, they look like they popped out of the exact same womb. The resemblance is unfucking canny. But Cassandra is also just delightfully evil, and I would have thought, and I think that would have been pretty fun to see on screen. I don't know, maybe in Secret Wars. There is a recurring thing with her though, where she finger bangs people's skulls, and I know for a fact that the only reason she does that is because somebody on set looked at that one panel where she does that in the beginning of Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly's new X-Men run, and they thought that was really cool, but that's not how she uses her telepathy. That's just her murdering Boulevard Trask's nephew or whoever the fuck that was. Slightly distracting throughout the entire movie, but I still thought it was a good effect nonetheless. But all that being said, I really enjoyed this movie. It's one of the two multiverse superhero movies that I actually liked, and I know that I made that joke about this being tied to so much shit, but at the end of the day, it is a Deadpool movie, and it's a solid Deadpool movie at that. And it's nice that Deadpool gets to have a solid trilogy. Like I said earlier, it weirdly brings the character full circle, 
Like, that whole first movie is just Colossus trying and failing to get Deadpool to be a hero. And that second movie is all about Deadpool learning to care about someone other than himself. And this movie is about Wade wanting to be a superhero. Granted, it's for all the wrong reasons. But he does wind up becoming the hero that Colossus thought that he could be by the end of this movie. And as a Wolverine movie, I like that this doesn't negate Logan. Uh, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is, for all intents and purposes, Hollywood Wolverine. Uh, he's a lot more suave and heroic. You know, he's more like an old western movie cowboy. Uh, but the Wolverine in this movie is more so the short-tempered alcoholic Wolverine from the comics. So it was nice to see Hugh Jackman play that character for once. Also, that scene in the car. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. That said, I do hope he's done. You know, I, I hope that this is actually it. You know, if Marvel does want to do more Wolverine stuff in the future, I hope it's with Daphne Keene. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing her take on the Wolverine legacy. It's a solid concept. And I hope that the movies can make it work better than the comics did. But those are my thoughts. But what about you? What did you think of the movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, let me know down below in the comment section. Or pop in our Discord. It's actually live now. Anyways, uh, hit that like button. Share and support the channel. And if you want to see more content like this, all you got to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie. Thanks for watching. And as always, take care.